If you want to get a high score on the math section and even a perfect score of 800, then you're going to need to know how to solve every single question correctly and quickly. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. What's going guys? If it's your first time here, my name is John Jong. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years. And my specialty is to take a student who's currently in the four, five, 600 range to a 700 plus by their next SAT. Now, as I said earlier, if you want to get a high score on the math section, even a perfect 800, you're going to need to know how to solve every single question correctly and quickly. The problem is that people who are scoring low and not happy with their scores is that they're having trouble doing both. What I mean by that is they are either solving all of these questions correctly, but they're not solving them quickly enough. So they end up having time issues and miss all these questions and not happy with their score. The other possible case is that they are solving all of these questions so quickly, but they're not solving them correctly. So they miss all the questions, not happy with the score. And the other case would be they're solving them slowly and solving them incorrectly, which was exactly where I was when I first started studying for the SAT. However, I was able to fix that, become capable of solving every single question correctly and quickly. And by my junior year, I was able to get a perfect score on the math section. So I'm going to show you what exactly happened and how you can do it too. So let's dive into some examples and I'm going to show you exactly what changed for me. What was that one thing that allowed me to go from 560 to 800 and how you can apply the same logic and score higher on your next SAT. So let's take a look at this example right here. This is a problem, typical problem you're going to see on the math section. And it's going to be showing up as one of the hardest questions, one of the harder questions on the math section. So if you take a look, we see y is equal to one. And we see this parabola right there because there's a two right there. Right. And the question says, if B is greater than zero, the system of equations has exactly one solution. What's the value of B, right? So back when I first started studying for the SAT, what I ended up doing was I read the question and I was like, Hmm, how am I supposed to solve this question? And like 50 se 15 seconds would go by and I'll be like, Oh, Let's try this. And I would end up trying a bunch of different things and then only to find out that it doesn't work. And I just wasted like 30 seconds. And I would start, I would sit there and think and be like, Hmm, let me try this. And I would try another thing and realize that it doesn't work either. And I wasted another 40 seconds. Next thing you know, I spent about two to three minutes on this single question. I'm running out of time on the math section and I start to panic. And the funny thing is that students who are currently in the four, five, 600 range, they are essentially going through the exact same set of problems. They look at the question, they try different things only to find out that they don't work. They end up wasting a lot of time and they start to panic. So what exactly is the problem here? Well, we see the question and we don't really know what to do. We don't really know how to solve the question. But what I realized after years of tutoring is that people who are solving, who are scoring in the 700 plus range, 750 plus and 800 range, this is their thinking process. This is exactly what goes down. And honestly, there's not that much of a difference, but there's that one small difference that makes all the differences. So they look at the question. Okay. That's a line. That's a parabola. Okay. So it's going to be like this and roughly like that. If B is greater than zero system of equations has exactly one solution. What's the value B. Okay. So we're working with a line and a parabola and we're talking about number of solutions. That's going to be discriminant. And I'm going to use B squared minus four AC to find out what the answer is. And can you kind of tell what the difference is? These people don't shuffle around thinking like, oh, is this going to be this or is this going to be that? Okay, let me try this 30 seconds. Let me try that 40 seconds. They don't do any of that. The moment they read the question, they know exactly what to look for and they know exactly what to use, which formula to use to get the answer. To elaborate on this question a little bit is, see, we're working with a line and a parabola, right? Because we we're having a line and a parabola right here. And we're also talking about exactly one solution, right? So when it comes to system of equations, when we have two different shapes and they're talking about solutions, two different shapes and solution is referring to the point of intersection. So when it comes to a line and a parabola and number of intersection, right? How do we find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola discriminant? Discriminant is what allows us to find out the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. And the only reason that they can piece these informations together and get to the conclusion that, oh, I have to use the discriminant to get the answer is that they understand 
when to use each concept. They understand when to use discriminant. They understand when to use the matching rule. There are 25 different concepts that are being tested on the SAT. And because they know all 25, and because they know exactly when to use them, whenever they see a question like this on the SAT, line parabola, number of intersections, it's discriminant. They know exactly what to use. As a result, they don't waste time trying different things. Do I do this? Do I do that? They don't do any of that. Literally, all they do is they read the question, identify the concept, and start solving it. And after years and years of years of tutoring and working with hundreds of students, I can confidently tell you that if you're scoring below 700, if you're scoring below 700, that's because you don't know the 25 concepts that are being tested on the SAT. And if you want to know what these concepts are, I'm going to link it down below. If you don't know what these 25 concepts are, you're never going to know exactly when to use them. And when a question like this shows up, line and a parabola and number of intersection, you're not going to know what to do. Like, do I do this? Do I do that? You're not going to know what to do and how to solve this question. But if you know that discriminant is what tells you, what allows you to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola, then you're going to go straight into discriminant. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen a video where a YouTuber is solving the section three in like five to 10 minutes. And the thing is, most of us are struggling to finish it within 25 minutes while that person is solving it within like five to 10 minutes. What exactly is the difference? There's obviously going to be more than one reason why they can do that. But one of the biggest reason they can do that is because of this. They read the question, they know which concept to use, and they go straight into it. They don't mess around trying out different things that don't work. They read the question, they know exactly what works, and they go straight into that. So what that means is if you want to score high on the math section, you want to score 700 plus on your next SAT, all you have to do is this. You have to become capable of doing this. Read the question, identify what to do, go straight into it. And how can you do that? Literally, all you have to do is one, identify the 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And then two, learn and understand when to use each of these concepts. For example, discriminant, one of the concepts, when do we use it? It's used to find the number of intersections between a line and a parabola. Understand when to use these concepts. And three, once you know what these concepts are and understood and learned how to use them, then three, all you have to do is strengthen them so that they come out quickly. What I mean by that is just because you know when to use these things doesn't mean they're going to come out quickly on the SAT. You can't afford to spend 15, 20 seconds thinking about, okay, line, parabola, intersections, what do I use? You, you can't spend time doing that. You want to be quick. Line, parabola, intersections, discriminant. You want to be like that. And if you can do those three things, I guarantee you, you're going to hit 700 plus by your next SAT. And this is exactly why I focus on these three things inside my program, SAT Math Accelerator, because one of the biggest, literally the biggest thing that will allow you to go from four, five, 600 to 700 plus is that you know what each of these concepts are, you know when to use them, and you can use them quickly. If you can do that, you'll hit 700 plus. If you can't do that, you're going to be stuck in your current score. And one of the things that we really focus on inside the program is strengthening that connection between the concept and when to use it. Because if that connection is weak, you're going to be slow. And if you're slow, you're going to run out of time and miss more questions. So if you want to learn more about the program, it's going to be linked down below. And also remember the first step. The first step is for you to identify these 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And I'm also going to link a list of these 25 concepts down below so that you can print them out and check out which these concepts are and what you know and what you don't know. And once you figure out what you don't know, you can focus on learning those. So what you need to take away from this video is that People that are scoring 700 plus, what they're doing differently is that when they read the question, they know exactly what to do. They go straight into the correct concept. And if you want to do exactly that, then there are three steps you need to follow. One, identify the 25 concepts. Two, learn and understand when to use these concepts. And three, strengthen those connections so that they come out quickly on your next essay. So that's going to be it. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.